Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and welcome back to another video. So PlayStation released beta 2.0 last week for the PS5 and with this update came support for unlocking the internal SSD bay. Now this is awesome for those wanting to expand on that internal storage from the available 675 gigabytes. So in today's video, I will cover the specs required, the drives that I've used with and without a heatsink, how much they cost and the very easy installation process. Now, depending on the drive that you go for, it will take between 5 and 15 minutes to do from start to finish. Yes, this is not as easy as plugging an external USB drive in, but it's very easy and really straightforward. But let me start by saying that this is a beta. This is beta 2.0. And although the drives I've tested work fine, please remember that there's no guarantees which will work in the future. So here's the version that I'm on, and this is the current storage that I've got. There's the internal drive, and I've got an external SSD plugged in, and that's for my PS4 games. In terms of the specs required, well, Sony have actually provided a list on their website that the SSD needs to meet. It needs to be a Gen 4 M.2 NVMe SSD with a capacity between 250 gigabytes and 4 terabytes. Plus, the read speed needs to be 5,500 megabytes per second or faster. In terms of the dimensions of the SSD, well, I've put those on screen now. These are the maximum that will fit in that bay. And remember these dimensions on screen, that needs to include the heatsink. So if you're buying an SSD without it, and you're going to add a third party, it needs to include both. So looking around online, there are at least five or six options available that will fit according to the dimensions. These include the Samsung 980 Pro, the Seagate Fire Cuda 530, and the Western Digital Black SN850. Most of these drives are available with and without the heatsink. I'll show you the two options that I bought now and how I installed them. Then you can decide for yourself whether it's worth buying with or without a heatsink and then buying it separately. Ultimately, it comes down to saving money versus spending a little bit of time. So to get to that SSD slot that's inside the console, all we need to do is remove the rear plate. So that's the side that does not have the PS logo on. It's also the same side as the disk drive if you've got one. We just need to hold the top part of the plate and we need to pull and lift it at the same time and it will just slide down. Then under it, there's this very small plate and there's just one single screw holding that in place. You just need to remove that. And that's it. We're now ready to take a look at the drives that we're going to install. Okay, so first up is the Western Digital Black SN850. This is with a heatsink built in. For testing, I've gone for a 500 gigabyte storage, but you can get either a 500 gig, one terabyte or two terabyte drive. I've put the prices on screen now, which are likely to change over the coming months as the demand increases. So it meets all of the requirements set out by Sony and it should fit into the bay. But within the last couple of days, Western Digital themselves have actually confirmed it will work, although I'd already installed and used it by the time they announced it. So as it's got the heatsink built in, it's just a case of removing the tiny screw and the spacer from the PS5 and then just slotting the drive in. Once it's in, just add that original screw and spacer back on and refit that bay cover. Now this fits perfectly as expected with no issues so far. But before I run through what it looks like on the PS5 and the different settings that we're going to get, let me show you the other SSD that I've tried. So this is also the Western Digital Black SN850, but this one does not come with a heatsink. Now technically this will fit into the PS5's bay and it will work. However, Sony does recommend using a heatsink to prevent overheating. So with that in mind, let me show you which heatsink I've added and how easy it is to install. So these are the prices of the different sizes available with and without a heatsink. So I've gone for the two terabyte drive without a heatsink. Now, obviously these prices are going to fluctuate a lot over the coming months as more and more people wish to buy it. And obviously the manufacturers can sell more and probably bring those prices down. But the price difference here between having a heatsink or not, especially on the two terabyte drive that I've gone for, was about 100 pounds at the time of ordering. And then for 10 pounds, I can get myself a heatsink. So all in all, about 90 pounds saving for about five minutes of work. So this is the heatsink that I've gone for. I've put the name of it on screen now. Now you can either attach it via screws or you can use elastic bands. Now I've opted to use screws as I'm hoping that will last that little bit longer. And this is all you need to do. So you need to add the pink thermal pad to the bottom plate. Then put the SSD drive on, then the blue thermal pad followed by the top plate. Now once done, you just need to screw the plates together using the tiny little screws it comes with, making sure that the SSD lines up so you can still screw it to the board later. And that's it. Now we've got the same SSD setup as before and I've saved myself £90. Fitting it is exactly the same as before, so we need to line the drive up, plug it in, and then use that provided screw and spacer to pop it into place. Then we need to replace the metal cover over the bay, which again fits perfectly. And once done, we just need to replace the PS5 rear plate, plug everything back in, and we can turn it on. I'll show you all the messages that we get on screen now and the new settings that we will see. Everything else I show you from this point on applies to both drives. It's exactly the same, it's just the storage size that's different. The first time you turn it on, we will get this message on screen, which obviously recognizes that the new drive has been installed. Then we obviously need to reformat it. And then once it's been reformatted, it will actually do a write test just to check that it's compatible. 
Now under the storage options available, you can see we've got the new drive. This is the M.2 SSD. And as you can see, it shows the full capacity available. The first thing that I did was I actually copied a few games over to that new SSD. And this was pretty quick overall. I tested on three different games and it took about 30 seconds each. Now any games that you do copy over, they don't show up any differently on the home screen or any differently in the game library. So if you have an external drive plugged in with games on, it shows that separately. But as expected with a new SSD, it's still classed as an internal console storage. So it shows up in the same place as before. Any games on the new drive are playable from it. So you don't need to copy or move them back and forth between the two drives. Now in the settings under storage, another new option is also available. And that allows you to download and store future PS4 and PS5 games straight to that new drive. This option was there originally for the PlayStation 4 games if you had a USB drive plugged in, but you can now set it for the new drive and PS5 games. So the next thing I did was I wanted to test out the load times on a couple of games, just to make sure that there was no issues with the loading. So I jumped on Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart and I did a test of loading both games up from the menu, from the save menu, on the console storage and on that new internal SSD. And as you can see here, it made no difference at all. Both games loaded up exactly the same. I then played some other games including Cold War, WRC9 and Spider-Man. Again, everything that I played works as you expect. It's as good as being on the internal drive. Well, one of the questions you might be wondering is, did it get any hotter? Does the console or the SSD feel hot? Well, obviously the SSD slot is now on the bottom of the console, so it's quite difficult to fill that. But from my experience so far, it's had no impact at all on the heat of the console. The ultimate question is, which one would I recommend buying? Well, if you want a quick plug and play drive, I would go for the one with a heatsink built in. It will cost you more overall, but if you're worried about a third party heatsink not fitting, or you're worried you might mess it up, just get that one instead. But if you're happy to spend five minutes putting the cheaper option together, it will cost you less for exactly the same result. So I spent £360 on the two terabyte drive, and that's with a third party heatsink, but it would have cost me £450 for the one built in. So final verdict, go for the cheapest option, whatever the best deals you can get, then spend the savings on upgrading the storage or buy a few extra games. For me, I'm really pleased I've got an extra two terabytes of storage now. It means I don't have to keep deleting games when I'm running out of space, and it now means I can also store my PlayStation 5 games on it. I'll still be keeping the external SSD drive for my PlayStation 4 games, so all in all, I've got about three and a half to four terabytes of space to use. Well, you've made it to the end, so thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments if you will be upgrading your storage, or if you're happy with the current storage size. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on so you don't miss my next upload. You can also follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.